The Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG is one of the most expensive card games to play, but with websites like Nikijo Collectibles, Cherry Collectibles, and Australian Yu-Gi-Oh! Auctions, most of the cards you need are only one mouse click away. But what would happen if these sites just disappeared and we were left to source our cards only from sealed product? Rather than relying on these sites, we'd be relying on nothing more than the luck to pull the cards we need to complete our already bullshit expensive video decks. Over the coming weeks and months, starting with nothing more than three structure decks and a budget of $60 a week, I'm going to build a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck with the goal of reaching the Oceanic World Championship qualifying event. Stick around to see me waste hundreds of dollars, open a ton of sealed product, and hopefully kick a few butts along the way. This is Sealed Only Yu-Gi-Oh! The Shadow Showdown. Okay, it is episode 9. We are almost 10 episodes into the series and the deck we are running is still pretty shithouse. We are chasing down that Verte Anaconda. So for this week, we have another box of Dual Overload. These are getting cheaper and cheaper by the week. I picked this up for $45. I also picked up three packets of Clash of Rebellions to try and get us that clown. These packs came in at $4 a piece, giving us a budget use of 57 of our $60 weekly budget. That gives us $3 to carry over to next week. Fingers crossed we're going to have a little bit there to use for something a little bit special. We might do something a little bit bigger, but we'll check our budget at the end and see how we're going. I'm gonna cut straight into this. I'm gonna destroy this box and see how we go. No scissors this week. Let's check what our giant card looks like. I'm going to call a tour guide from the underworld. Oh, it is a Stardust Dragon. I'm pretty sure this is our first Stardust. Could this be? Could this be an omen? That is a really good artwork. I really like that. Okay. You know the routine. There are six packs. Five cards in each pack. All ultra rare. Remember Clash of Rebellions were chasing the clowns. A hat tricker, a damage juggler, and a trapeze magician rank four. In dual overload, hopefully a Halka Firebrax. Mainly a Verte Anaconda, but we will take some impermanences if they are on offer as well. Another copy of Fantastical Dragon Phantasmate for the side deck would also be a bonus. I'm going to start with a pack of Clash of Rebellion. Remember, Clash of Rebellions was a set that did not have a hollow in every pack. With some Raid Raptor support, Bubble Barrier, Wavering Eyes, Magical Abductor, and an Ignite Crusader. As you can see, that is a super rare. No clowns in there, but we started off with a fairly lucky pull. Let's go into our. Ooh, we're going to open up our Flame Swordsman pack. We're going to put the good card at the back. Golden Castle of Stromberg. This is the first time we've seen that. Protection Whelp. Zombie World. Salomon Great Almirage. And a Starving Venom Lethal Dose Dragon. Not great start, but we did see some cards in there that we haven't seen before. Let's open up our Tenny Monster. Dual Overload. Good card to the front, or good card to the back. We have a Speedroid Hexasaucer, a Digusto Emerald. This is like copy number six. Magical Musketeer Starfire, Cyframe Lord Omega, and a Trap Kick General Seer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's open our second packet of Clash Rebellion. We need that Performage Hat Tricker. Humid Winds, Performer Power Drummerilla, Extinction on Schedule, Black Metal Dragon, Cosmo Forerunner, Raid Raptor Fuzzy Lanius, Brilliant Spark, Rank Up Magic, Raptor's Force, and a Samurai Blowtorch. 
Now we got a bear in that pack. Gotta love those Cosmo cards. Let's get into our Cyber Dragon Infinity Pack. Is the Anaconda in this one? I hope you're hitting that like button. The like button is what gives us life and luck. So hit that like button. Mystical Space Typhoon, Malefic Territory, Blackwing, Zephyros, The Elite, Ang Greycum, Umbrella, and Witchcrafter Creation. We are getting down to the wire and it is not looking too pretty. I hope you are smashing that like button. This is getting absolutely nuts. Fourth packet. We have King Yo Sukui. We have our Transformer. Hysteric Sign. Cybernetic Overflow. And it's not... It is not a Link Monster. It is another copy of Phantasme. That is a really good pull, guys. I'm really happy with that one. That's going to go straight into the side deck. Thank goodness. I think that card may have just saved this opening. So we have a Phantasme. Let's crack into our last packet of Clash of Rebellion. I can see a true clown on top. Is this an omen that we're going to see another clown further down the pack? Pianissimo, Didi Pandora, Aroma Garden, Aroma Bergamot, Raid Raptor, Fuzzy Lanius, Brilliant Spark, Rank Up Magic Raptors Force, Super Heavy Samurai, and we did not get the extra clown that we needed. That's okay, we do have more Clash of Rebellions to open. Fingers crossed there is something in these last two packs of Dual Overload that is going to help us save this opening. We're going to put the Rad card to the back. We have a Swap Frog, a Casper, a Malefic Divide, a Secret Samurai Fuma. We're going to check the bottom. It's a Spell card. It is a Awakening of the Possessed. For some reason that card seems to be sold out everywhere. I do not know why. Um, I didn't think it was that great, but people seem to love the Charmers. We are on our last pack. I hope that there is something in here. My goodness, I need, I need that Verte Anaconda. We have a Dangerous Fried Fur Nightmare, a Speedroid Marble Machine, Malefic Tune. This pack is so bad. We have a Cubic Ascension. It is not a Link Monster. It is another Chaos Dragon Levianir. That is our third Levianir, guys. Why can we get three of these and no Anacondas? I did not think Anacondas were so hard to come by. Well, again, there aren't going to be too many changes to the deck this week. I can see me putting the copy of Phantasma in. But in terms of... The Clash of Rebellion stuff, there's really not a lot of stuff in here that we can actually run. We don't need the Trick Clowns, we already have our quota for those. Nothing in there is usable. I don't really want to run another copy of Chaos Dragon Levianir. We can't run any frogs in the deck because that doesn't really work. And none of the spell and trap cards are actually going to be of any use to us. Can't get any more can't use any more copies of El Mirage. One copy that we have is enough, and we rarely use that one as it is. So it looks like the only change we'll be making to the deck is Phantasme this week. If you like the opening, of course, hit that like button. It's going to add to our luck ratio next week. I'll come back with the deck updates. It's only going to be a short one this week, and then we'll get into some Yu-Gi-Oh! duels. It seems as though... We're destined to spend week after week trying to chase down that anaconda. I don't know how long we'll have to wait for, but the changes to the deck this week after the pretty shit pulls we did end up with are very minimal. As you can see, all I have in front of me here is the side deck because that is the only place I could make a change. I'm going to take you through the 15 cards. I'll tell you which card I've added in, but it should be fairly self-explanatory. We're still sticking to the one copy of Saravis. I do like the fact that this guy can negate a targeting effect from one of your opponent's cards. It's a good card. I want to keep it in. I'd actually like to get another copy or two. 
The only change we did make, we took out the copy of Shit Old Dragon and added in the second copy of Phantasme. As I've been seeing quite a few Salomon Great decks in my local area, I'm hoping that I can actually use this card to my advantage and net some, uh, some profits off it. We are still running the five card Kaiju package, including four monsters and the copy of Kaiju, I uh, interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Look, it's good when you see them. I could probably cut the copy of Interrupted Slumber because I don't think I've ever seen it. Maybe cutting this package down to a three card package will be enough, but with what I've got at my disposal at the moment, I'm not confident in cutting it yet. We're still running three copies of Twin Twister in decks that we can't out back row in the main. It's important that we are able to put this in. Three copies of Lost Wind. I do like this card. We haven't seen it too much in the series, but being able to negate the effect and halve the attack of a special summon monster, it's pretty special. The last card we have is the final copy of Reshidol Incarnation. I do think this could be one of the next things I cut. Seeing two in the main deck, I don't think I'll ever need to side in the third copy. Whether we're going first or going second, I don't think one extra copy of this card is going to be any more advantageous than two. That's all we have for the deck updates. This has probably been the quickest one so far. I would like to let you know that at my locals this week, they have decided to keep their doors closed, so the duels this week will be online. I'll be taking this exact side deck with the same main and extra deck that we used last week at locals to do the duels. I'll try and play three or four rounds. Hopefully, I can get through more than a few without people rage quitting on me when they see the first summon of a Shadol card. Let me know in the comments what you think about the deck. Don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, stay tuned for the duels and the recap that always comes after. See you on the other side. All right, we are here with round one and we are playing what looks to be an invoke deck, but it actually was a generator deck. What you can see here is the opponent going into a first turn Macabre, setting up boss stage to special summon all of those tokens. I responded easily here with an El Shadol Construct from the El Shadol Fusion, sending a few cards to the graveyard. But unfortunately I was called by the grave. I did still get to use the Construct effect to, of course, send a Wendy. Wendy's effect was definitely negated by the invoked uh, Alistair and um, yeah I had to basically try and attack but the generator ha negated my constructs mandatory effect and destroyed it. I ended up with an El Shadol fusion back in my hand and a super polymerization set to go into an El Shadol window. Unfortunately, the Macabre was just too big for that window, attacking over it and negating the effect of bringing that card back to my hand. There's not much I can do here. He uses Boss Stage's effect to get him that special summon, and I am dearly trying to hold on to my life here. Again, that heart is just too good. He negates the effect, and it is over. So after citing in a copious amount of kaiju cars to try and get over some of his monsters, he starts and I am now trying to set up a board. He gets all of his tokens. I realise that he has the negate so I first go into the foolish burial. He ashes my Wendy unfortunately. I am left to go into a super polymerization into an El Shadol window. I get a kaiju on the board, I'm able to attack over my iron kaiju, putting it in my graveyard and leaving me with a 3300 beat stick. Unfortunately at this stage he has the Alistair the Invoked in hand and is able to go into his invocation combos just like he did in the first duel. He gives it the attack boost, attacks over my Jizakiru and I am left with nothing but a Mathematician in my hand plus what I draw. I drew into the Necro Fusion which wouldn't have been too bad had he have not had the negate on the field. I tried to search out my Kaiju with the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber but it is negated. I do uh, try to use the Mathematician once again but alas it was also negated. All I can do here is set to 
and pass turn. He goes into his Earth Slicer, destroys both of my back row. I activate the Necro Fusion, negating his boss stage, but he has another one in hand to use straight away. Knowing that Apcalone cannot be destroyed by battle, I'm alive for at least one more turn, but he goes into his boss stage, summoning all of those tokens to his side of the field to let him set up for another turn. I attacked over his Macabre, which is great, and the tokens are destroyed, but he has some fairly beefy monsters on the board for me to try and destroy. He goes into the Black Luster Soldier Ritual. There's not much I can do here, and defeat is imminent at this stage. I draw for turn, take on a Winder. He gets a special summon. All of his monsters are buffed, and I am in real trouble here. All I could do was surrender. I was hoping for a little bit of redemption in round two coming up against Subterra. Knowing that my Shadol deck was a little bit more explosive than the Subterra deck, I thought maybe that if I could stop him gaining control, I'd be okay. My first turn didn't look so pretty though. He had the Called by the Grave to significantly hamper my efforts in using my Squamata effect to get some more Shadol cards in the graveyard. If you have a look at the hand that he has with three Fiend S's, he was definitely in a good position to negate a lot of the cards that I was trying to use. He attacks over my Armageddon Knight. I draw for turn, going into a Squamata, using Super Polymerization into the El Shadol Shekinaga, and he has a final battle again ready for me. He flips up his Guru. He uses Guru's effect, of course. And I used my Dragon's Effect to destroy his back row. Destroying that final battle was a good move, but he just searched another one with that Guru's Effect. I was able to mount a little bit of control until he started attacking over my monsters. His back row just deemed itself too strong. I flipped up my Shekinaga. He has his final battle. And he's able to once again flip down my Shek. While it does have a big booty, when it's not face up on the field, it can't do the gating that I want it to do. I use Necro Fusion from my hand, or from my set, uh, my set Necro Fusion, but it's negated with a uh, Subterra Fiendus, unfortunately. He goes into the final battle, boosting up the attack of his Guru, destroying my Shekinaga. Because it was summoned with a super polymerization it did not have a El Shadol or a Shadol fusion in the graveyard to bring back to my hand. I go in to draw my two cards. I was able to get a little bit of advantage on the board but it just wasn't enough at the time. He, sp uh, he flips up there can be only one. I flip up El uh, an El Shadol Ariel trying to bring back a copy of Squamata. I use El Shadol to make sure the aerial effects go through. I go into a copy of El Shadol Construct and I'm trying my best to do what I can to get a little bit of advantage back onto my side. Unfortunately, those flip down effects make my Shadol cards quite uh, useless and he's able to use Remastrix's effect to banish my Construct, again giving me no chance to recur my fusion spells that would have helped. That is the end. Game two definitely didn't start out much better. All I could do was set a Wendy and two back row and leave it at that. I was able to go into a Dino Miscus, but he still used a Hidden City effect to be able to search one of his spell or trap cards. He negates my shit old dragon with a Called by the Grave, which means I have to leave that sh Hidden City up on the board. He impermanences my Wendy and I really have nowhere else to go. I'm able to do 2700 damage, leaving him on 5300 and passing the turn. He goes into duality and he can see the guru straight up. There's not much I can do knowing that he has that card because once the subterra deck gets on a roll, they are really, really hard to stop. I go into an allure of darkness here, stupidly getting rid of my whole hand. That twin twisters would have been helpful. I should have waited, but we live and we learn. I go into 
Union Carrier here just to boost up the effect and to try and give me a little bit of board presence but I forgot he had the face down final battle and was able to boost up the effects of his cards. There's nothing I can do with the damage juggler, he negates the effect. I do have a construct on board but I do also know that it's not long for this world. I'm able to solemn strike his guru but he's able to normal summon a fiendus to get his amastrix on the field and once again banish my construct making it extremely hard. I'm able to flip up my dragon sending the amastrix back to hand not knowing how easily this deck can recur its resources all he needs to do is flip up his card and he'll be able to get that remastrix back on the board quite easily. I link off into a Shadow Construct but he has an extravagance there to draw himself a couple of resources and of course he has the Guru. That card seems to be popping up whenever and wherever it needs to be at any given time. He now has full control, two back row and I don't have much at all. He gets that Amastrix on the field, I know what's coming. He's able to do some more searching, grabbing his Archer, flipping down his Amastrix. He flips it up in his turn, banishes my Aerial, normal summons, goes into the battle phase and attacks again. Okay, round three, and this is the final round. Again, a pretty poor start. All I could do was set a monster, set two back row, and pass turn. He has two Galaxy Cyclones in hand to just banish those straight away. And as soon as I saw that Foxy come down on the normal summon, I'm once again shitting my pants, knowing that I have to come up against a Salomon Great deck. All I can do is wait for him to attack into my Caius. And I special summon the aerial from hand, he attacks into that, not that I can go into anything because I don't have any banished monsters. Here I made a really poor misplay going into my Ahashima and my Digusto Emerald without enough targets in hand to weave and warrant drawing a card. He finishes this one off quickly going into a transcode talker, doing what he needs to do to bring back the update jammer. He goes into a uh, Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf and the Zeroboros. To clear off my board. I have no monsters, no cards in hand and I am basically at his mercy. I did get the Chaos Dragon Levianir. I'm able to get over his Zeroboros but he top decks the sign at mining going into the four mud skipper bringing out a Bailings and then searching parallel exceed. Because the sideverse monster was summoned he can bring out another copy of that to obviously go into Abyss Dweller which does significantly kill my deck. I have zero attack on it and it is over. Alright game 2 is here. Fingers crossed I'm able to do something a little bit better now. I was able to get a first turn winder on the board and I knew this would slow him down. Salomon Grade need to do so much special summoning but Winder is going to really shut his deck away. I'm able to use my Phantasme. Hopefully that's the new one I pulled out of this week's set. What I did was send it back, send his uh, Bay Links back to hand knowing that he wouldn't have that protection on the field. I go into my Link 2, I target and I'm able to shut down his graveyard as well as give my window a boost to 3200. I've left him at 1400 life points for this turn and he scoops. Game 3 was my chance at redemption against Salomon Great after last week's poor showing against seeing it twice. He goes first, goes into a Bay Lynx and of course goes with, with the parallel XC play. The second Bay Lynx comes out and he's able to go into a Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, a uh, Heat Leo as well as the Abyss Dweller on the field. I do my best to try and make up some kind of thing. I'm able to go into Grista here. I take care of his Abyss Dweller. I try and destroy his Salomon Great Sanctuary but I'm not able to do so because he negates the effect with Bay Lynx. He protects it, sorry. Foxy's 
into the Will of the Salomon grade. I'm able to negate the summon of Zera Boros. I'm sitting pretty here and I really like the position that I'm in. I swing for 2450 direct and I have a Shadol card in my hand to use for a summon negate. There it was against the Bailings. I'm feeling good because I've just banished Salomon grade cards from his graveyard. He searches out a Jack Jag. Specials into a couple of cards here. I'm feeling okay. I draw into a Twin Twister. I go straight to the battle phase to try and attack over his Sunlight Wolf, but it's protected by the Bailings. He sets a card and normal summons the Jack Jag. I'm feeling okay. He goes, I go to attack, but he uses Salomon Great Roar against me. I'm able to get the Salomon of the Shadow Fusion back to my hand. I go into the Shadow Fusion. I don't know why he didn't ash that card. Chain links are working okay here. I'm able to send a couple of cards to the graveyard. The chain links I pick are totally wrong here. I miss my special summon, but I do get my destruction effect. He scoops. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the recap for week 9 sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! I first want to start out by giving a massive shout out to the crew over at Yu-Gi-Oh! Community Auctions on Facebook. They have been doing a ripper of a job getting auctions out to the Yu-Gi-Oh! community on time, every single time, for pretty damn amazing prices. They are doing a super awesome promo at the moment where you can go into the draw to win one of three different Yu-Gi-Oh! themed pop vinyls. I will put the link to that competition in the description down below. You need to go and request permission because it is a private group. So request permission, Will or one of the other admins will add you and you'll be able to follow the instructions to get involved in the promo. It is pretty sick to have the chance to win something for free, so by all means go and check it out. Let's not waste any more time, let's get into the recap. From the duels that you've just seen, you saw us go one win, two losses in another round. This time around, I didn't think the deck was that bad. What it did lack was any sort of way to finish an opponent off. I got some of my opponents so close to getting to the end of the match, but still had no win condition. I need to find something big, something huge that can do some serious damage like a Boral Sword Dragon that's actually going to help me out when it comes to winning those final games. I have El Shadol Construct, but sometimes she's not enough to do that final push for victory. Game one, Generators. I've never really faced that deck before, but I do know they spam a whole heap of tokens out that make it really hard to clear their board. With the negate effects from some of those new cards that they've got and the new Ultra Rare locked up to be able to recur and get that Mardell on board pretty quickly makes it extremely difficult to get over. My deck simply was too slow at the time and I couldn't do much about it. Round 2 we came up against sub Terrors, and I don't know what's worse, being hand looped by a Trish hand loop deck or having to just play turn for turn against a sub Terra deck where they keep flipping up and flipping down sub Terra Guru. That card is absolutely shit. I hate it, but I'm so glad it is in the game because it makes sub Terra somewhat competitive. Being able to negate my monsters with cards like Effect Veiler um, and of course Fiendus as well as Infinite Impermanence made it a really hard matchup and as you saw in the videos we lost that one as well. We really really didn't have much control. It looked like in that second game we were actually going to have a win but I just ran out of resources and couldn't get that final push to win. That's why we need something bigger and better in the extra deck. The final round was a little bit of a Salomon Great um, Groundhog Day. Of course we came up against Salad in one of the rounds but this time we actually come away with the win. Um, I do feel as though the deck is probably performing a little bit better and having that second copy of Phantasmate in the side deck made it extremely, uh, I guess, more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess it made it more consistent in terms of seeing that card in my opening hand for the Salomon Great first turn. We had control there. Grista put in some amazing work. Being able to negate any sort of inherent summons made that card the MVP for definitely that game, if not the round in general. I do need to keep going to build this deck even further, and moving forward, it has opened my eyes to the fact that we need another kind of boss monster. I don't know whether we go for something like 
access code talker that's coming out in the new set, or do we stick for something like Moral Sword Dragon that I can easily pull, well, semi-easily pull, out of the 2019 Mega Tins? I'm not quite sure which route to go yet, so maybe you can help me out. Let me know in the comments what you think the better card is. Access code talker, or of course, uh, Boral Sword Dragon. I think there's place for both of them, but I'm not sure if we've got the room, so if I could only pull one of them, which one do you think it should be? I also need to get a little bit more consistency in getting more than one monster on the board. When we do finally pull that Verte Anaconda, I have worked out that I do need to find a way to get it out first turn. I'm thinking of going down the, planet, the Predator Plant engine. I want a couple of Orc Scorpios and of course the, um, the other one that gets it on the board, pretty simple as well. Uh, the Darlington Cobra, that's the one I'm thinking of. We're going to get some of that, so I'm looking at picking up some Maximum Crisis Special Editions that are going to help us out there. There were also a couple of other good cards like um, Ash Blossom in that set as well, so but there's, there's always a chance we might be able to pick up one of those as well. We're still going to try and pick up Trap, tri trap Tricks Rafflesia as well. I do think the fact that we have a Grave Diggers Trap Hole sitting in our binder is going to make that quite useful in terms of stopping our opponent if we're going first. Getting a rank 4 on the board is not too difficult at all, and if we do have a little bit of an advantage, then we can use the Ahashima play if it's still in our deck at that point. We could probably drop out of the Digusto Emerald, bring in a Trap Tricks Rafflesia, and instead of recruiting advantage by drawing a card, we're going to have a little bit of defense some power there to try and hold on to our boards a little bit longer. I do think that will be the way to go in the future and I do have some Breaker of Shadow Special Editions ready to bust open to try and pull that card. We didn't get our extra clowns in the opening this week but that will be the goal for next week as well. It's clowns and it's the Anaconda. They are my two top priorities right now. If I don't see those in the next week or so, we will keep trying until we do. Don't forget that episode 15 is just around the corner, we have, I think, six more episodes till we get there, and by the time we get to episode 15, we should have enough fat in the budget that's going to get us something pretty impressive. I didn't go through the uh, win ratios this week, but I'm pretty sure we're sitting still under 50% at maybe about 45. We need to pump that back up. I know for certain that when I play in week um, week 11, so not next week, the week after. I will be back at a local tournament where I do think the competition might be a little bit better for me to actually use my deck in real life. Week 10 is still online duels. We don't have a locals running at the moment, so I will be playing online again. Hopefully I can get some good duels in and maybe even bump that win percentage up a little bit more. Guys, I want to say a massive thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the viewers that I do have out there at the moment. Any of the links that are in the description, give them a click and go and support some of the best Australian Yu-Gi-Oh! stores that you'll find. Whether it's a Facebook group or a website like Aussie Yu-Gi-Oh! Auctions, by all means, check them out and use the codes that I'll provide in the description as well. They are some of the best Aussie sellers around. And don't forget to get involved in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Community Auctions giveaway. Check it out. Will and the guys would love you to be there. I'll see you in week 10. Maybe hitting that double digits will get us one step closer to that anaconda. I hope I see you there. I know I will. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs>